here repping at Hawthorne. Uh, I'm sitting here with Amber Center from Supernova Women. How are you? I'm great. Good. How are you? I'm good. We're so happy to have you visiting LA. We're at Green Street today, um, all the way from Oakland. You've you've traveled down here, so we're happy to have you. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. So um, if you didn't know, Supernova Women is a organization run by black and brown women that um, promotes equity within the cannabis space. Um, I'd also love to hear exactly how you would talk about uh, Supernova Women as well. So yeah. tell us a little bit about it. Sure. So Supernova Women is a nonprofit organization and we work to create opportunities for black and brown folks in cannabis. And we do that through our advocacy efforts as well as uh, educational programming and support and of course uh, network building because uh, we also know how really important it is to uh, create a tribe and uh, mm -hmm. and have uh, people that you can lean on um, as you're going through and navigating uh, the cannabis the cannabis industry as a black or brown person mm -hmm. exactly and you know what i've always been curious about so why Supernova? Where does where does that the name of Supernova Woman come from? Yeah, sure. So we knew that the organization that we were building was going to be very impactful, mm -hmm. and that it would be so impactful it would be like this explosion of energy. Yeah, <laughs> and that uh, a number of smaller galaxies would spin off of what we were mm. doing. And so that's how we came up. With I that. love that. That's amazing. <laughs> so yeah. So tell us a little bit about your background as well. I know you're from Chicago, but you know maybe talk a little bit about how um, you got into cannabis and uh, how you got to where you are right now. Yeah, sure. So uh, I am from Chicago, born and raised. <laughs> um, I uh, am a veteran of the United States Coast Guard. I uh, also suffer from lupus, which is kind of how I came into cannabis because I was looking for relief from uh, the symptoms that I deal with and started using cannabis and noticed how much it improved my quality of life because it really helped me some of those symptoms uh, from lupus. And uh, yeah, so my background is in branding and marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done that since I was... 19 and wow. it's always been a real passion of mine <clears throat> you know I was like part of the web club <laughs> the inaugural web club back when I was like 15 16 love that it's like 1996 <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing my age I know I was like don't hate <laughs> yourself but <laughs> it's awesome but, uh, but yeah always been um really passionate about branding and marketing um always felt like uh, I needed to speak up on behalf of others, which is where a lot of the advocacy comes in. Right. And yeah, just constantly trying to be helpful. Yeah, I love that. So marketing, I know that um, you do work with Maker's House as well. It's your business. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk about, a little bit about that? I know you do marketing and sales and all that for them, but love to hear more about that company. Yeah, so Maker House is a uh, kind of like a storytelling company that really focuses on creating an inclusive supply chains within uh, not just cannabis, but cannabis and beyond. Mm -hmm. So um, just making sure that the supply chains that are being built to support uh, my company, Maker House, and the brands uh, that Maker House holds are um, inclusive. And mm -hmm. uh, we're really making sure that the dollars that we spend within the supply chain are supporting uh, the businesses that we want to support. It's important. So yeah. just being incredibly intentional with uh, how we build the company, how we build the supply chains, and, and who we're supporting. Right, right. And um, that, I don't know, that makes me think, too, of, like, the importance of representation in cannabis. Uh, can you speak to that a little bit? Just because I know um, we do a lot of talking, but I think sometimes people are like, okay, um, where do we go from here? Like, how do we make meaningful change that's intentional, right? So what do you think? Yeah, so I mean, really being, it's all about like being intentional and making sure you're, uh, I guess, uh, empowering the community and empowering uh, uh, folks to, um, I, I mean, just do what they do very well, right? right. So 
um, making sure you're uh, working with um, with companies uh, that are smaller, that are diverse, um, and you know it's not always the easiest route. Right. It's typically not um, because the easier routes are usually scaled up and streamlined. Mm -hmm. You know. Whereas with the smaller companies that you're often dealing with smaller minimum order quantities, mm -hmm. you're dealing with terms that you can't have for 90 days. <laughs> right, right. <Yeah. laughs> you're dealing with all these other kinds of uh, small business challenges. Mm -hmm. But it's really important that we obviously support these businesses uh, because we want them to survive and right. we want them to be able to scale up to be bigger. Right. And um, I know the SURF Fund, uh, Hawthorne was involved. We partnered with Supernova Women. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Because uh, I feel like that obviously directly um, affects small businesses, small um, BIPOC-owned businesses. So uh, where are we with you know picking the grantees and, and all that good stuff? Yes. So uh, Supernova started the SURF Fund back in 2020 when... Uh, the civil uprisings from the killings of George Floyd happened. And when that happened, there were a number of different uh, businesses, of course, across the United States, but cannabis businesses that are black and brown owned in particular in the Bay Area that were robbed. And it wasn't... Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, these businesses were robbed, and they weren't robbed necessarily for... Uh, or targeted by like the protesters or anything like that. It was actually folks that were opportunists mm -hmm. that uh, knew that the police would be preoccupied right. with uh, the uh, protests and everything that was happening. So these were just people just kind of like hanging out, wait, waiting in the wings to mm -hmm. take advantage of this opportunity. And so a number of different small black and brown cannabis businesses were affected, they were robbed, they were, uh, I mean, just, just ransacked, destroyed everything, and yeah. suffered some pretty significant losses. Some businesses didn't even open back up. Wow. So um, we put together this fund to issue direct grants to folks that were um, <clears throat> targeted and mm -hmm. uh, victims uh, fell victim to this. So we gave away $30,000 in 2020. Amazing. And uh, this year we'll be, or actually very shortly, we'll be giving away 25000 Nice. So very, very excited to be able to offer, you know, direct payments to um, uh, BIPOC and, uh, business owners that could really use relief. Right. That's amazing. And um, I know that HTC wants to continue support to support that in any way. So we're, it's, really, it's really awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for your support. Oh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's the work that needs to be done and the work that we're, we're really happy to be involved with. So, yeah. And yeah. you know, a, a lot of people say things like, Oh, don't they have insurance? But there's so many different types of challenges in cannabis. Mm. One in particular is, Theft insurance. Oh, so, okay. Uh, cannabis businesses are typically zoned in areas that are considered high crime. Right. And theft insurance uh, isn't even available in those areas. So a lot mm. of these folks don't have theft insurance because they can't even get it. Right. So uh, just a number of different challenges in being a cannabis business. So just trying to help uh, as much as we can. Yeah, that's amazing. And like going back to those challenges, I know that the tax in California has been huge issue you want to talk a little bit about um you know the down with the taxes uplift the people rally that you did uh all those images were so beautiful i, I want to you know hear more about how that went and um yeah yeah so we've actually held three rallies uh this earlier this year so mm -hmm. we've been really busy and, <laughs> Both and busy we love it <laughs> yeah um and they were all kind of centered around uh, bringing tax relief really for the operators, but as well as um, for the consumers. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we had a cultivation tax that was fixed tax on a, every pound of cannabis um, here sold here in California. Mm -hmm. And then we also have this really excessive excise tax, which is typically levied on 
goods like tobacco and alcohol, mm -hmm. um, and it's also now on cannabis, which cannabis is not a harmful uh, right. substance. So, yes. you know, <laughs> we obviously do not like this syntax being put on mm. uh, a non-toxic uh, medicinal herb. Right. <laughs> a literal plant. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we rallied at the state capitol twice, uh, once back in January and then again in June, mm -hmm. um, just asking, well, really demanding tax relief um, for our cultivators, for uh, the supply chain being the manufacturers and distributors, as well as for retailers. And uh, really what we want at the end of the day is not only to make it a bit easier for uh, the operators in the supply chain, but we want to encourage customers uh, to come and buy from licensed dispensaries and mm. not buy on the duty-free, unregulated market. Right. And so um, we were successful in our push. Uh, we got the cultivation tax eliminated, which was great, and yes. we got a reduction in the excise tax from 15% to 12%. Okay. Um, so the battle's not over. Obviously, mm -hmm. we could use more tax relief, and we'll continue to push that. But yeah, we did get make some headway, which was great. Yeah, that's awesome. And I don't know. I'm I'm so thankful that there are organizations like Supernova Women who are doing that work actively. Cause somebody's got to do it. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. Work, you know? I yes. And but then I always think, well, if not us, then who? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Um. So yeah. So. Uh, Moving, shifting gears a little bit, uh, I know you're a 360 grower. I know how much you love Mother Earth and uh, Hawthorne products. So tell us what you're growing with. Yes. So I'm a huge, huge <laughs> fan of uh, Hawthorne's products. I currently, in my outdoor garden, uh, in my backyard, I've got, you know, a number of different flowers and uh, some edible flowers and it's just really beautiful back there, mm -hmm. and I use all of the uh, Mother Earth products, so I'm using the ground swell mm -hmm. as well as the potting soil, and uh, my plants just love it. Yes. And I've been using them for several years now, and this you I'm love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love know. It. And you're, you said you're using Hydrologic too, right? Or is that in your, that's not Maker House, is it? No. You're using it in yours. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So um, in my little indoor cannabis garden, uh, I've got a hydrologic uh, water filter, mm -hmm. of course, can filter. Yes. Right? Like just the whole shebang. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. We're. Uh, I love hearing stories about, um, you know, everything going on with social justice and cannabis, but also like the fact that you are growing too. <laughs> like, I don't know. it. The industry is so colorful. Like, there's so many different people doing different things within it. And, uh, but it always goes back to the grower, in, in a way. So, yes. That's awesome. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's really funny. That's kind of, that's how I got my start in cannabis. I mean, of course, I was a consumer, but... Right. Obviously, I, like, became very curious and mm -hmm. started to <laughs> dive deeper and then uh, became a grower, you know? Yeah. And then once I started growing my own weed, then I... I had all this trim, and I'm like, oh, hmm, what do I do with this trim? <laughs> I make hash, and then from the hash, I make edibles, and now I started to make edibles, and mm -hmm. it just kind of progresses from there. I think that's like, you know, the, the cannabis journey for a lot of people. Right. It's not like a rite of passage almost. It's totally. like if you're going to enjoy the plant, start growing the plant. Mm -hmm. So. Well, yeah, I think, again, thank you so much for chatting, for visiting us today at Green Street. We really appreciate all the work you and your organization is doing, so. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you for having me. Of course. All right.